हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू अवंतिका डिजाइनरिंग सीरीज और ए डी एस एस वी लाइक टू कॉल इट एवरी वीक ऑन वेडनेसडे वी फीचर डिजाइन एंड टेक्नोलॉजी लीडर्स हु शेयर दर प्रोफेशनल जर्नी दर थाट्स ऑन दर डोमेन ऑफ वर्क एंड डिजाइनरिंग वेर द वर्ल्ड ऑफ डिजाइन एंड इंजीनियरिंग मीट मेक श्योर यू फॉलो अस ऑन सोशल मीडिया इंस्टाग्राम लिंकड इन फेसबुक एंड ट्विटर एंड विद दैट लेट्स कंटिन्यू विद योर शो The means in which we communicate or perceive information has been constantly evolving and the most recent shift for the same has been to visual communication. With the rise in compatibility of people with social media and technology, it has left all of us in state of flux. We are engulfed and exposed to different mediums of content on a daily basis with this push to gulp all of it at once. With this being said, it becomes very overwhelming to be able to tell a story that not only stands out and creates an impact but also builds an association in people's mind and that's why today we have with us mayuri nikumb who leads as a design director of communication design at elephant design studio she is someone who has catered the growth of brands and told a story in a way that has had a memorable impact on people's mind creating a sense of connection and association by touching upon the emotions that generates a fondness amongst the brand and the people with her experience in the industry of communication design for over a decade let's get into a conversation with her on the abc's of branding on our journey of discovering designering Hey Mayuri thank you so much for joining us at Avantika Designering Podcast it's lovely to host you and looking forward to the next 30 odd minutes interacting with you on your journey on branding and designering thank you so much rohit pleasure to be here great um so mayuri uh, starting with the first interesting thing that before recording the podcast uh we were discussing about your views on covid and you had this very interesting perspective on what will be the new normal would you like to share with us your views on this uh yeah yeah sure rohit i i remember uh, that conversation we had briefly before uh so yes the new normal will definitely be different uh from the pre covid era as as we call it these days uh but you know my belief is uh, slightly uh, philosophical and coming from a historic perspective that uh, humans are extremely resilient you know and adaptive as creatures um there have been pandemics and calamities since centuries um and they have occurred in even worse and uh, more underdeveloped conditions and humans have yet thrived so yes while there will be some corrections and changes in the way we live and work Uh, but i think life at large will uh, continue to operate um, in in the way it used to at some point uh, we are already experiencing life crawling back to normalcy in bits and pieces uh, places are opening up offices are partially resuming air travel has begun uh, so yeah there are indicators of uh, how much things will change or not um, as of now and of course there are certain industries uh, that we all know are going through a much a uh, larger uh, impact um, and uh, especially in the short term things like airlines hospitality retail so probably these are the areas where uh, you know bigger changes or or innovations are expected um and and there will be some operational and behavioral changes as well like for example uh, i think business travel will reduce drastically because people have realized meetings can happen remotely important decisions and deliveries can happen without being physically present so i think i think probably that's a welcome change in some sense but i think broadly speaking uh, give it some time and we will bounce back just the way uh, our ancestors always have so uh, that's an interesting perspective uh, mayuri i hope our new normal will be beautiful and much better than the previous normal that we've had and uh, here is wishing for uh, good for everyone around us true, true, yes. 
So Mayuri, the next thing that I want to get into is first of all, congratulate you and Elephant Design for successfully completing 31 years. I think that's an important milestone uh, that the organization has, uh, has achieved. Along with that, you've completed 12 long years with Elephant Design. Um, so before we get into more details on branding and your work, would you would you uh, tell us about your entire professional journey? How did uh, everything happen? How how did you connect the dots? Uh, yes, sure, Rohit, and thanks a lot. Uh, yes, it's it's a it's a big feat. Uh, Thirty one years for Elephant, and uh, yes, twelve long years for me. It's been exciting. Uh, it's definitely been a very very incredible journey. And uh, you know, interestingly, I think the seeds of creative thinking were kind of sown right from my childhood so you've asked me about my professional journey but I'll probably flash back a little more uh, so my parents both come from creative backgrounds uh, my father was an animator back in the day when you know they did cell animation um, and later he worked at the film and television institute of India as the head of art direction and uh, you know on most days I would uh, go to a film institute after my school as my mom was working as well and so I grew up in a very, very creative environment amidst uh, creative conversations over cutting chais. Um, and so subconsciously, I think I developed a love for storytelling. Uh, and for the longest time, I, I wanted to be a filmmaker. Uh, so after I did my graduation in commercial arts, uh, I wanted to go ahead and join FTII. Uh, but uh, things took a turn. And instead, I went on to do my master's in design from IIT Bombay. And uh, hence, my both my projects, uh, big projects uh, at IDC were documentary films. Uh, but IDC taught me the ropes of design process, uh, the importance of research, uh, being true to the roots in some sense, you know, uh, designing for backyard problems, grassroots problems, and also how multifaceted the domain of design really is. Um, but eventually, uh, life took different turns, and I ended up being sucked up into the dot-com world. Uh, I worked as I began my career as a visual designer in a software firm, and interestingly enough, I was the only designer in a company with multiple geographical locations and hundreds of employees, uh, and they were very excited to have a designer on board. Uh, but I think that, in hindsight, was a great learning experience for me. It uh, helped me look at things uh, analytically. It taught me to collaborate with different kinds of teams other than design. Um, I learned how the combination of technology and design actually works. And uh, eventually I drove that in some senses in that uh, organization. Um, then I did a short stint with a, a Canadian e-commerce firm that had an India development office. And this was around 2003 uh, when e-commerce was still very, very nascent in India. And uh, I led a small team of designers over there. Uh, but of course, I found that uh, I was not able to satiate my urge uh, to design with more creative freedom and all outside of pixels, uh, so to say. Uh, so I moved on and uh, I, I, I joined uh, a design firm called Onio Design later. Uh, and here I got to work on a variety of design projects uh, from space design to web portals, uh, corporate branding, event branding. And uh, here is where I was, uh, in some sense, exposed to client interactions, um, working with multidisciplinary design areas, and even handling smaller teams of my own. Uh, so here is where I kind of got exposed to the workings of a design studio uh, as such. And eventually, my journey then brought me to Elephant. Uh, and uh, to tell you, interestingly, I had been following Elephant's work and journey since my IDC days. And I kind of nurtured this uh, secret wish to work with this, uh, work with them someday. And uh, it eventually came true. Good for me. Uh, and Elephant is where the world of packaging design and brand building kind of opened up for me. Uh, I learned how the combination of words, right articulation, and uh, meaningful visuals uh, together make, make a glorious impact. I got deeper into design strategies, brand building, trend spotting, um, and of course, storytelling in a big way. And uh, I also got to work on uh, a lot of extensive international projects. Uh, so I, I got to travel and study newer markets like Africa, Middle East, uh, Southeast Asia, understanding behaviors there, uh, purchase patterns, and uh, how culture impacts their uh, uh, behavior and uh, things like that. 
And uh, one such project, uh, interestingly, I'd like to mention was uh, called Colors of Asia, which was an out and out research project that was funded by the Hong Kong government. Um, and it was undertaken by a design consortium called the Design Alliance Asia, of which Elephant is a part and uh, in some sense represents India on, on that uh, platform. Um, and, and so it was a research project that ran for uh, a, year, uh, a year long, and it was uh, culminated in an exhibition at the Hong Kong Design Institute and uh, later also made into a book. Uh, so 13, actually 13 countries participated in, in that uh, research project and we represented India uh, through the lens of colors in culture. And uh, I was the only person from Elephant who actually worked on the entire research piece. I collaborated with uh, research teams from other countries. I built the India narrative. Uh, I was also a speaker at one of the seminars that happened during the course of the exhibition at the Hong Kong Design Institute. Um, and, the, and the entire project uh, was extremely enriching. Um, and, and so over the years, uh, then I have worked on multiple brands, uh, led several award-winning projects. Uh, I work with both established um, global brands, as well as I guide startups on their entrepreneurial journeys through design intervention. Um, and um, I also uh, now mentor a lot of young talent. Uh, I speak at various institutes and events. Uh, I lead and mentor also the communication design team at Elephant. And I've been doing so since a while now. Um, and, and yeah, so now I work on uh, exciting new briefs and brands uh, every day uh, with some of the best minds in the industry. Uh, we create brands and products uh, that make a difference at many levels. And the beauty of it is that it's all evolving every day. Uh, you know, I see the role of women, the way they were portrayed in briefs, uh, having changed dramatically over years. Uh, the openness to experimentation with a brand and visual narratives is immense. Uh, there is a great deal of tech merging with design now. So, uh, so yeah, these are just super exciting times to be in. And the journey so far has uh, been extremely fulfilling. Well, that's an exciting journey. In fact, um... I believe, Mayuri, that uh, there are very few people who get the opportunity to work with their dream uh, yeah. organizations and companies. And we're so happy that um, you received this opportunity. So while uh, being here, you also um, were voted as one of the uh, top 40 and the under 40 go-getters across um, India in, in creative media field. Can you tell us something more about it? What was it all about and how did it happen? Uh, sure, uh, Rohit. Uh, so that was another milestone uh, in the eventful journey so far, uh, since we've been talking about journeys. And uh, in fact, it was a very welcome recognition as normally uh, professionals from media and marketing come more under the spotlight, uh, simply as a result and nature of their work. Uh, but design uh, got its due recognition on a broader platform here, uh, which is worth mentioning. Uh, and to give you a gist, uh, Impact from uh, Exchange for Media Group, uh, they launched their very first edition of 40 Under 40 list uh, to recognize extraordinary achievers who are 40 and below in the Indian media and marketing and advertising industry. And uh, I had the privilege to be a part of uh, quite a distinguished list of achievers across these industries. Um, so, so while the list uh, is ruled by digital entrepreneurs, well-known people from the world of journalism and media, uh, I am the lone soldier on that list representing the de design industry and, and very proudly so. Uh, and also because it was the inaugural list, uh, it, it makes it even more special. And uh, also in the 40 people on the list, uh, there are about 34 men and only 13 women, uh, which is also quite a matter of pride to represent and contribute uh, like this in a very meaningful way. Excellent. Congratulations for the same, Bayuri, and we're really happy uh, to see you at that pedestal. So moving from there to something that you do on a daily level basis. So there are reasons why certain brands are killing it today. Um, that's because of their consistency, whether it's on TV or social media. How about you telling us your favorite brand and why do you feel drawn to it? Um, sure. So, uh, yeah, you said that. By the way, is brands. it a difficult question? <laughs> if you have to choose from one of the brands that you've been nurturing, you've been working on, is it really difficult to choose one favorite brand? Uh, 
uh, definitely it is uh, difficult to choose from the brands that I have been working on. Uh, but the brand that I'm drawn to uh, is uh, what I'm going to tell you about is uh, not from that set, but I do wish to work uh, in that category someday. Um, so uh, I will not play favorites here from the from the brands that I have worked on. I will I will talk about a different brand. Uh, so you mentioned in the beginning uh, that uh, you know you said there are certain brands that are killing it today. Um, through uh, through TV or social media. So yes, a lot of digital brands are, are doing that very well. And the benefit uh, for them is that they are digital brands and they are able to reach out to a larger audience in, in a consistent manner. Um, but for me, what stands the test of consistency uh, in a brand is a seamless and single-minded engagement with the consumer at every possible touch point. Um, you know, is your brand telling the story you want to tell in a consistent manner everywhere and at all the times? Um, and in that context, a brand that I've always admired um, is Indigo Airlines. Uh, you know, considering the kind of uh, competitive scenario they entered when they did, uh, and it was and even is a pretty crowded space uh, with each brand kind of jostling for the traveler's attention. And suddenly with the kind of story Indigo told and the way they told uh, was an instant connection and a very refreshing change to the traveler that engaged with so many different touch points of an airline brand. Uh, I think they've totally nailed their brand consistency through the assets that they've built for the brand over time, uh, you know, both intangible as well as tangible uh, assets, uh, right from their custom typeface uh, that goes with their brand color, uh, very witty and crisp communication and tone of voice, um, their promise of keeping time, uh, even their influ in-flight uh, food packaging. Uh, I think it is all uh, so well put together. Uh, and a brand that just uh, simply adds delight to your journey uh, through all that consistency every time without fail. Absolutely. I think um, Indigo has been doing extremely well uh, last couple of years, move from um, uh, no frill or low frill airlines to today uh, being one of the uh, most favorite airlines uh, of, of all the people. So moving from your favorite brand to what is your brand philosophy? You know, I have different philosophies I like to believe in, uh, depend on, depending on what the situation around me is. Uh, but uh, the most common one that I keep finding myself uh, drawn to uh, and is even relevant in, in times like these is uh, to be adaptable. Uh, it is also something that has been a core part of my own journey, uh, you know, adapting to newer situations, challenges, changing course to keep growing uh, has given rise to newer opportunities and achievements for me. Uh, it is extremely important, I think, to keep developing newer strategies, skills and approaches to adapt to uh, the changing environments around us as well. And uh, sometimes it becomes imperative to change and adapt even before there's a trigger to do so. And I think that's what uh, helps us remain relevant and ahead of the curve uh, to succeed and thrive. Uh, that's how humanity has survived and that's how the biggest brands have survived and thrived over the years. And um, if you notice, uh, this kind of connects back to the very first question you asked uh, about my view on uh, the current situation and uh, my, my thought that we will eventually adapt and thrive. So being, being adaptable, uh, I think, is, is my brand philosophy. I think that's a beautiful thought. So, Mayuri, from hands-on managing brands to now leading teams, you moved into this leadership role. We would like to know how did this transition happen while doing these things that you had to learn, unlearn, relearn? How, how was the entire process for you? So the transition has been fairly gradual, uh, you know, and uh, I'm glad I went through these various phases that I did because every stage of work, every phase uh, has taught me uh, valuable lessons and some of them I carry with me even till date. And uh, one of those things uh, from the very beginning is getting your hands dirty, you know, working hands on, uh, trying every task by yourself. Um, and I thank my, uh, the time at which I was in art school because that time computers had not yet been so rampant, so rampant. So uh, we literally drew typefaces by hand and created uh, visuals and that has sort of developed a sensitivity towards 
a type to give you a small example and other things whether it is about printing mock making using tools just working with hands i think has has been a very important part uh, of the start of the journey and uh, it's something very important that i even hear, urge uh, young designers at elephant and even others uh, other young uh, students and designers who i interact with and one of these tools is sketching uh, sketching is the most important and basic aspect of any good designer's toolkit and it goes a long way in the journey ahead um Uh, you know the power of a pencil and paper at the stage of ideation should never be undermined uh, and that part helps me even now i i simply sketch ideas along with my team we brainstorm or uh, even when we get to the design stage when we have to develop concepts uh, it that helps immensely and sometimes we even share sketches with clients uh, when the projects are a little more collaborative and complex so so that's a skill that has grown me uh, grown with me and stayed with me through the transitions um what i had to learn over time was uh, the language of business and how to marry it with uh, the design strategy and solutions that follow it uh, how uh, right articulation and language that connects design to the business idea and propagates it further uh, plays a very important role in how that idea is conceived and presented and uh, i think that's something that i have learned honed and developed over time and now i'm in the thick of it and i i find it extremely exciting and fulfilling you know nowadays to kind of start thinking from the left side of the brain and gradually shift to the right uh, so so that's that's been uh, wonderful as part of the learning and and the journey and another thing i would like to quickly mention that has um, helped me is that i i've loved working with people since the beginning uh, i thrive on interactions and that has helped me also in in the transitions Uh, collaborating with creative minds with teams uh, i thrive on client interactions getting a sense of their business world um and and this has helped me even now when i handle larger teams uh, when i when i kind of mentor them i interact with them we, we collaborate together and they come from different backgrounds different experiences so that's been another important um uh, quality i would say throughout the transitions that has helped great and you worked on various rebranding projects um we've seen you blogging about it writing about it being vocal about it my question is why is it necessary for a brand to change itself and why should they do it i mean we understand that the consumers today are evolving faster than the brands that they consume but how do you think that brands can keep the space uh, with their consumers Yeah you're absolutely right uh, Rohit uh, times are changing consumers are uh, definitely are evolving faster than uh, than the brands they interact with um, and uh, it is extremely important to have a pulse a finger on the pulse of the consumers uh, and the and the changing environments uh, you know take for instance the current scenario uh, who would have known at the beginning of the year that we would be spending a good part of uh, part of it sitting in sitting at home attached to our laptop spending more time with family than we ever did before and doing all our chores by ourselves and people have had to change their ways of living and behavior within days and some brands quickly rose to the occasion uh, and and reacted to it they introduced offerings that are relevant at times like these and uh, helped build a connection with the consumer um a recent example that comes to my mind is uh, asian paints uh, you know a brand that is largely in the space of home decor uh, they launched a hand sanitizer and uh, this kind of enables brands to stay on top of consumers minds uh, it also comes across as as a brand that is empathetic that cares uh, and is adapting to the consumers needs um so so yeah but coming to rebranding more specifically uh, there's a lot of factors uh, that uh, that matter in in these mat- uh, these activities and you know keeping a brand more relevant uh, factors like uh, paying keen attention to purchase patterns uh, behavior of consumption changing social fabric uh, changing aspirations of consumers changing family structures even uh environmental changes even government level policy changes so there are a lot of these factors at play um and uh, it could be all at one time or a few of those that help keeping brands and their offerings relevant if uh paid keen attention to 
so it is very important for consumers definitely to feel connected with their brand and if they are changing it is imperative that the brand evolves with them you know it's exciting when you mentioned asian paints uh, so uh, here is a trivia that um, i worked with asian paints i was heading institutional oh. sales um, uh, for asian paints for karnataka about a decade uh, or nearly a decade and a half ago and i've seen asian paints changing uh, from gattu to the uh, you know to the logo where uh, you know it's it's dripping like paint and to the new branding that we see so uh, truly an inspiring and an uh, very very amazing company to work with so while we were reading one of your blogs as well you mentioned this interesting um, thing you said that imperfection is a new perfection and can you share what does it mean in the world of visual design basically what that means is uh, you know we have reached a visual fatigue uh, of having everything in perfect order uh, things that are glossy polished uh, everything in place super manufactured synthetic and uh, at some level uh, there is a yearning for something that feels authentic something that feels uh, without pretense uh, perhaps a little customized handcrafted even uh, it could be a little rough on the edges but it seems far more real and and hence perfect in that sense and that's also the reason we see a lot of smaller diy customized kind of brands uh, selling online as well uh, you know where one product may not be the same as the other product it might differ it might not be uh, you know perfectly crafted but there is a sense of um, connection you feel and uh, to to just uh, speak about top of mind examples uh, you know we see handmade soaps these days uh, they have no perfect shape or color but they promise to be gentler on skin uh, there are cookies and protein bars that are not perfectly shaped they are rougher uh, but they preferred now uh, for their ingredients and contents and freshness um even apparels i mean if you look at all the tattered and distressed clothing lineups in in swanky stores it almost looks and seems ironic but it's all leading to uh, you know uh, the emotion of freeing oneself of all the unnecessary perfection and letting go um that of course does not apply to every category uh, i mean there are products that are bought for their perfect engineering and they will be continue to be bought uh, for that reason but there are a lot of other categories and products like i just mentioned where uh, imperfection is is a welcome change and uh, more believable than perfection it connects better exciting and um, you know while there are these various tools uh, apart from research that assess you to identify trends what is your go to tool to understand what's in you know it is as simple as curiosity and an open mind and uh, of course a little bit of reading and uh, i think i always say i think that's why designers are perhaps uh, always young at heart because uh, you know they need to have the mind of a child uh, question everything defy conventions uh, look at everything with a different perspective uh, i it, it's very very important to keep observing and absorbing um, and i and i love doing that i observe people at airports supermarkets restaurants uh, even at work uh you know there's a great deal of learning in uh, observing how people interact how they make choices why they make those choices how they behave in various situations because finally we are designing for the user we are designing for the consumer and uh if if you can observe and absorb as much as possible from what's happening in their lives it's going to inform your design solution that much better uh but also it's very important to draw your own insights from all these observations and and that's what eventually leads to identifying trends uh, that really matter and make an impact so here is a trivia for all our listeners if you go to elephant design and if you were to visit mayuri at her office usually people would ask you for tea or coffee but at elephant design what you get served is paper boat and uh, paper boat is um, a packaging that was designed by elephant design and mayuri is uh, uh, you know mentioned it at um, uh, various instances including the conversation that we were doing before recording the podcast that she has um, a special place uh, for paper boat in her heart uh, and it's it's very uh, well appreciated uh, 
So Paperboat landed up taking this unique positioning of um, linking it to memories of childhood. My question, uh, Mayuri, specifically with this brand, is why this positioning? And can you share uh, something more on the journey of building its packaging, communication, and more? Uh, so yeah, it's rare uh, for paperboard to not come up in conversations like this, and uh, I was uh, kind of waiting for it. <laughs> um, so uh, it's it's a brand definitely that's uh, quite special to me, and and there are many reasons for it. Uh, firstly, it is it is a brand that's created straight from the heart, and for me, any brand or story that is authentic, uh, it always hits home. And a big part of the brand DNA right from the seed of its idea was authenticity and sheer genuineness, uh, which of course was woven through every aspect of the brand as it progressed. Uh, so when the idea for Paper Boot was born, uh, the market was crowded with uh, cold beverages and divided primarily into aerated and non-aerated drinks, as you may also know. Uh, so the question really was, how does a well-meaning brand enter that space uh, and make a mark for itself? How does it cut the clutter and uh, give the consumer something that adds delight to his life? And hence was born the idea of nostalgia and childhood memories. Um, and um, actually why I admire the brand so much is that the brand idea was already there. It was already enveloped in the product story. Uh, the product range that was envisaged uh, before the brand even came to life um, itself was clutter breaking and novel in, in that uh, market scenario. And also the consumer need state mapping was bang on, uh, you know, uh, there were more and more young professionals moving out of their hometowns to bigger cities for work and career opportunities. Um, so while these big cities and swanky buildings had tons of these uh, global colas and fancy juices, what they yearned for was the, um, you know, innocence of their younger days, uh, simple recipes made with love by their mothers or grandmothers. And uh, it all just got pieced uh, very beautifully together, the product story leading to the brand proposition. Uh, but that means it was an equally big responsibility on design to do justice to the story and make it come alive, uh, be ownable as well as connect uh, with the consumers. Uh, so, so the design solutions followed and we envisaged these uh, standy pouches that would stand out amongst the pet bottles and, uh, you know, tetra packs and so on and so forth. And we would give these standy pouches a, a touch and feel of paper uh, because you can't name a brand paper boat uh, connected to innocent memories and then wrap it in synthetic looking containers. Uh, so we went through a lot of rounds with the print vendors to get the right finish appearance uh, that was aligned to our vision. The visual language itself was created to depict childlike innocence. Uh, you know, rather than showing glorious fruit, fruit, uh, fruit photographs with uh, juicy splashes, uh, we took a very different approach and uh, developed a string of simple looking fruit mnemonics that uh, got supported by a you know small small town like uh, landscape depiction that connotes a symbolic native place that probably anyone could associate with and of course there's a little paper boat floating in a nearby pond uh, in that visual as well uh, and eventually everything uh, about the brand, the visual language, the brand story became so synonymous with paper boat drinks that we created a host of other touch points then uh, on the same story. Uh, a delivery vehicle was designed that was inspired by an ice gola cart. Uh, we designed book covers. Uh, we designed um, point of sale uh, devices that mimic the act of plucking a fruit from a tree. Uh, so in, in a true sense, uh, we kind of weave this proposition of uh, childhood memories and nostalgia across every touch point and brought it to life uh, on, uh, for the brand. And uh, to tell you about uh, its uh, journey in the retail and in the market. Uh, so in 2012, uh, Paperboot was quietly placed on uh, shelves, you know, the products got placed on the shelves. Uh, and uh, the following year, it started being sold uh, in Indigo Airline uh, in their in-flight uh, menu. And uh, throughout the beginning, there was no advertising, there was no mass media, there was no social media. There was nothing till that point that would actually create a hype for the brand. But purely based on the strength of packaging system and uh, brand story, it managed to take off and it carved a niche of its own. And by 2016, uh, which is just four years after the quiet launch that it did, 
Paperboard had found itself in the same list as Apple, Amazon, Cadbury, and even Pepsi, uh, named as one of the buzziest brands by AFAX. And in the following year, in 2017, uh, Interbrands brand report included Paperboard amongst the 40 next generation disruptive global brands. Now, that's a phenomenal journey for a startup brand that's not digital first uh, to have made in a span of five to six years. Uh, that too, on the sheer muscle of packaging design uh, as the only consumer facing touch point in, in its uh, nascent stage. And uh, since its launch, also packaging, uh, the brand has won uh, several awards for design, brand connect, uh, consumer preferences and more. And um, even uh, it even has a Wharton case study on itself uh, made in 2019. Wow, that's, that, that would have been a really interesting experience to be a part of the entire thing. However, in your answer, you, 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 know, you mentioned one word, which was uh, the impact of technology. And Mike, you know, you, this, this draws my attention towards this question that how has technology impacted communication in today's era? Any striking examples of a brand that comes to your mind, which, is, which has done this phenomenally well? I think uh, the biggest role technology has played, um, broadly uh, speaking, uh, in the sense of communication, uh, is it has democratized communication. Um, you know, everyone is an influencer and everyone is also the user. And there's a great deal of power in that uh, for both the brand and the consumer. Um, there's a greater ability to connect with exactly the kind of consumers uh, you want to without having to spend millions on uh, traditionally bought media that might or might not reach uh, the people you intend to reach. Um, so I think that's that's been an uh, interesting uh, facet that technology has brought into communication and of course speed uh, you cannot ignore speed and um, a striking example that I can give you from something that we worked on recently uh, is um, and of course something that is very relevant to the current times also um, is that uh, we launched uh, we worked on an assignment uh, uh, that uh, took care of telemedicine now, considering uh, how the situation was panning out, uh, governments quickly uh, flung into action and um, telemedicine became a very important tool where stepping out is not possible. Uh, medical facilities are already overloaded and there are uh, newer probable cases piling up every day, every hour. Um, so a group of tech professionals already had a basic uh, backend setup ready, which they needed to repurpose for this assignment. And we at Elephant partnered with them to create uh, the social media presence and create the communication uh, for them to forward the cause. And uh, we had to kind of reach out to two big stakeholders. One was uh, the doctors, of course. Uh, we needed to reach out to them to volunteer for the cause and to citizens to inform them that there is such a facility and uh, to inform them about the helpline and the, where they should contact and what they should do in what situation. Um, so in a matter of hours, um, we named the initiative uh, we created a logo for it and within a day and a half we shipped out an entire campaign uh, that got launched and reached uh, the respective people and uh, that simply wouldn't have been possible without the power of technology and what we can do with it excellent so so that brings us to something that we keep doing designing which is engineering plus designing how vital do you think it is for both the fields to go hand in hand. Uh, do you think it impacts your world of visual communication? So, yes, I mean, uh, I've heard this term uh, even in our interactions before. And uh, every time I uh, kind of think about this term, it actually takes me back uh, to my IIT days uh, at IDC. Uh, where though the course was called Master of Design, um, there were students from all streams uh, that were accepted for it. You know, there were engineers, architects, commercial artists and such. And all these people kind of came together to uh, study design. And the idea was not to come up with beautiful looking visuals or well-crafted machines, but to come up with well-informed solutions that would help the society at large. Um, so, yes, uh, design hearing, I think, is uh, a very apt combination of streams uh, that probably will shape the best uh, of solutions to come. And to answer your question more specifically about visual communication, and if I go even more specific, uh, if I look at packaging design uh, 
as 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 a uh, area there's a lot of interesting development that we have seen over the years uh, you know even the printing inks have seen a lot of innovation happening so there are heat sensitive inks that change personality depending on the temperature they are exposed to um there's lenticular printing that allows visuals to animate in a static medium there's even olfactory properties uh, that are being built into printing inks that can allow you a specific smell you know so it engages more human sense uh, senses while interacting with the piece of communication and um, i have also been jury on print week awards for a couple of years um, and uh, we see some amazing new innovations uh, in substrates used in the structures in inks even in the way paper is folded uh, to make uh, visual communication more impactful and meaningful so uh, so yes what i would say is uh, design brings in uh, empathy and in- emotion to a solution uh, while engineering enables uh, the tangibility and uh, you know bringing in the innovative uh, ma- uh, engineering part to it in an effective manner uh, so if these two are used uh, in an optimum manner i think that is a sweet spot for any good design that's exciting so mayuri this brings us to the end of our podcast where we ask you uh you know quick questions uh, to to which we would like to hear your top of the mind responses so we call this segment gyan vyan and it is our uh, innovative take um on rapid fire questions so are you ready for this sure let's go ahead great so what is your brand personality type are you someone like nike who is active <laughs> inspirational exciting or are you someone like an apple which is sophisticated and artistic uh, do you want me to select out of these two you could you could also give us a third one <laughs> of your choice uh so of course i i'm i'm definitely uh, more artistic and um hence uh, i i veer more towards uh, the apple side uh, but i am also i think a bit of your uh, uh, you know uh, so to say indian brands uh, like chumbak or uh, fab india you know probably both of them combined together because i i like to bring in a lot of indian sensibilities uh, and and uh, thoughts uh, and some elements from the culture into into whatever i do so yeah probably apple meets a fab india <laughs> excellent that's that's a creative thought the next one what accomplishments of yours are you most proud of something that you haven't shared uh while talking about your journey but an accomplishment that you're really proud of i think i think it's it's just the journey uh, rohit uh just where i started and uh, on the way whatever i have accomplished uh, and nothing of it was planned i think the beauty of it is everything has been spontaneous everything has uh, not been as uh, i want to reach there and hence uh, i i'm working at it uh, i think what i'm proud of it it's everything has been unplanned i have just followed my heart uh, done things and it has got me wherever i am so so I, that that's i what i can say great and what is the one best piece of advice you've received so this might again sound a little philosophical but uh, and but this has stayed with me that however harsh uh, the winter may, winter may be uh, it will always be followed by spring Okay that's noble and <laughs> three things that you cannot live without are they things or are they people or people and things your choice i okay uh, it it will be family it will be a purpose uh, to wake up to every day um, and it could be anything it could be my work or it could be something exciting i'm working on and um, it will be travel okay and uh, any one of the most beautiful places that you've ever visited and you recommend it to any and everyone who wants to travel sure why not uh, so there's uh, this country i visited laos uh, when we were working uh, we, we kick started the colors of asia project and it's a beautiful little uh, southeast asian country uh, landlocked between uh, other countries and i think it it has a beautiful innocence about it uh, because it's not uh, your regular tourist space a uh, place and it has influence of a lot of other uh, colonial uh, architectures like some of the other countries have so i think um, i think that that would be my recommendation beautiful so we will 
definitely get on to finding more about that. And the last one on this one, which is one of your most recommended book on branding, something like a Bible on branding, which one should should we pick up? So I'll tell you what, uh, Rohit, I, I rarely read books uh, related to branding or design. Uh, I, I more often am attracted to human stories and they keep me inspired. Um, so, so what I can suggest is a book that I'm currently reading, which is far from branding, uh, but uh, it's, it's a biography of Da Vinci and I have always been wanting to read it. It's a, it's a very thick book, so I'm, I'm going very slow. But, um, but I find my inspirations from the way people have lived their lives and, uh, and, and the things that they did and what led to another, one thing to another. So, so sorry, that's not exactly an answer to your question, but, but that's what uh, I would recommend. Absolutely. We will still take it as an answer because <laughs> if you're reading it, I'm sure that it's an inspiration for a lot of young designers who wish to, uh, who, who get inspired by your journey, who would like to be um, uh, like you, successful like you at some point in time in their career. And I'm sure that they would like to uh, read and catch up on this. So thank you so much, Mayuri, for doing this. It was an exciting conversation with you on your journey on branding, on book that um, <laughs> a young, inspiring uh, designer must read. Thank you so much for joining us on Avantika Design Hearing Series. Thank you, Rohit. It was a pleasure. Hey there, we hope you enjoyed our show. Do write to us on ads at the rate avantika.edu.in. We look forward to your opinions, feedbacks, and suggestions of speakers you would like us to host on this show. Do tune in our channel next week on Wednesday for a new story on Hub Hopper or wherever you get your podcast from. Make sure you follow us on social media, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and tune in with us on our journey and don't forget to share it with your friends.